The Old Testament reading is taken from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is taken from Philippians, the second chapter. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. 
and they began to salute him. Hail, king of the Jews. And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloth and put on his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge made against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled his sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph brought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father. And from our Lord and Savior, his only Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. The meditation for this Sunday of the Passion is based upon the narrative read from St. Mark, the appointed gospel. To my dear friends in Christ, our Lord entered Jerusalem the Sunday before the betrayal before the thorns and the nails, as a king. But he didn't come on any kind of a war horse or stallion in any kind of great procession. He wasn't met by heads of state. 
or by dignitaries. He didn't go to the palace or to a throne. Absolutely none of that happened. Because his kingdom isn't of those things. Rather, he came in humility as a servant. Instead of fine clothes, royal silks, he wore servant's garb. Instead of being honored by the movers and the shakers of the city, he was, by and large, greeted by children. He humbly rode into Jerusalem that holy day to answer their prayer, Hosanna, which means save now. He came not by Jewish treachery, not by Roman hatred, but solely out of his love for mankind. He came to fulfill his Father's holy will, to save his people. His suffering and death is called the Passion because it's his passionate and intense love that drove him to the cross. The penalty for eating the forbidden fruit was death. Someone had to die. There was no other way around it. And so the king himself comes to Jerusalem to submit to his own law. And there he breathed his last, and he died. He died for rebels who mock his royalty and his divinity. For rebels who think they know much better than he what makes for happiness. He died for those rebels who drink too much or put substances into their bodies that have no godly reason for being there. He died for rebels who lust with their eyes and then sadly allow their bodies to follow suit. He died for rebels who tell lies, who gossip, and who are lazy, who are racist, who hold grudges, who view pictures and movies that demean other human beings. He died for rebels who lie, who steal, who cheat, who neglect their neighbors, who neglect their own family and their own wives. He died. This king who entered Jerusalem, he died for us. For us, he is king. For us, he came, he died, and he rose again. We had no other help. No other hope. We were struck down in our guilt, and we were dead in our trespasses. But his love for us, who by all rights should be considered unlovable, his love for us was that intense. It's so intense and so passionate that his love compels him to go to the extreme to buy us back, as it were, from hell itself. His love caused him to undergo a torturous, agonizing, humiliating death for the full guilt of the sins of the world. Sins that he didn't commit. His love took him willingly to a shameful execution a death reserved for rebels. For those who have shown time and time and time and time again that they have no honor and deserve only death because of their self-centered,
countless vulgar ways. You're people of God. That was our crime. And that was our penalty. But he took it upon himself and he voluntarily paid the penalty for us. His kingly love is so that because of it, he forgives us our sins. He removes every not so nice thought, every bad deed, every shameful, despicable act, acts that we hope our dear mothers never come to know. The random price to buy us back from hell itself he gladly paid. Incredible, incredibly, his kingly love has redeemed you. Worthy of the price of his life. His passion that we'll consider again during this most holy of weeks is all about his love for us. And the lengths to which he was willing to go and went to rescue you and me. And the whole world from our well-deserved death for eternity in hell. He laid down his life of his own accord, on purpose, as we might say, to set you free. He knew the cost. And yet he went and did it in spite of that. For now you see the cross is his glory. For the cross is exactly where his love is seen by sinful men. And he draws them to himself. From your mother's womb you came into this world through water and through blood. And from the side of Christ water and blood gushed forth. <coughs> signifying how sinful men are now reborn in baptism. As a stain in that new life in the precious sacrament of the altar. From the cross, through faith in what happened there, you are now a new creation. Beloved of the eternal God himself, and so today it begins again for us. Together as his people, we once again, again, once again begin to observe this observation, this whole week of Holy Week. Certainly unable to lead, but by God's grace, able to follow him once again to the cross. Where our eternal destiny was changed by God in Christ Jesus for us. Let no one here, or no one anywhere who claims to be a child of God, take this week lightly. May we all, from the youngest to the oldest, consider the events of this next week in awe, in wonder, in thanksgiving. For behold, sons and daughters of Zion, your king, your king comes to you in love. Thanks be to God.